Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're talking about what is a lumber molder and how does it work? So if you've been following along the last couple of weeks on the channel, you've probably seen this machine before. I just picked this up. It's a brand new Woodmiser MP360. We just got it in the shop here the other day and hooked up. It is replacing that old Logosol PH260, which I've run for many, many years. So if you've been following the channel or maybe just found this video and you're curious, you might be wondering what can you do with this machine? So this machine can take a rough sawn board like this oak board here and turn it into a finished product. I pulled out some samples here of different things I can make with this. We've got some thick V-groove paneling that'd be like for a ceiling or some cherry bead board for wainscoting, some oak crown molding, some casing and my bread and butter which is hardwood flooring. This is some nice four inch walnut hardwood flooring. So this machine in one pass can surface four sides of the board and take it from a rough board to a finished product. So I'm gonna open the hood here and we'll take a look underneath and I'll show you the inner workings of it. So this machine has five motors on it. One for each of the four cutters and then a motor for the feed rollers. So this is the end that the board enters and the board will go right in there and you have a bunch of adjustments up and down for your top head, your side fence, your lower cutter up and down. And as the board enters the machine here, you can see down here at the bottom, there's a bottom cutter head. That's a planing head that kind of acts like a joiner, if you're familiar with uh, with woodworking equipment, that's like a joiner. So that planes the bottom of the board, kind of helps take out some cup and if there's some bow in the board. And I can also, see if you can see here, these cutter heads have four slots. Two of them will typically have a planing knife in, that's the edge of the knife there, and two are open. So I can put back relieve knives in this bottom head, like when we're doing flooring, I can show you here. Our flooring gets back reliefs in it. Some of our molding will have back relief in. It's just, you know, to make a higher quality product for different applications. So that's the bottom head. So it goes underneath these feed rolls. These are steel and they're serrated. That's what grips the board and pulls it through underneath, underneath this feed roll. And then you hit your first side cutter head. Now this right now is just set up for straight knives. This machine I've actually only run a test board or two through. I wanted to make this video before I get it all dirty and full of sawdust. But you can see here that's on a spindle and it has a straight knife in now. So if you were to run this right now it would just make a smooth nice planed edge on that board. So you can do the, the sides and the top and bottom but I can pull that head out and put in lots of different profiles. I actually have a second set of heads here and these are actually my flooring knives. These are actually carbide tipped, tongue and groove. That would cut your tongue. This one will cut your groove. So you can replace that with hundreds and hundreds of different variations depending on what kind of product you're trying to make. Across from that you have pressure rollers, this adjusts, pretty much everything in this machine adjusts for whatever you're making because there's such variability between different things, you know, between flooring to let's say crown molding, there's huge differences in how this machine gets set up. So everything's adjustable. So you've got these pressure rolls here that put pressure on the board, they hold it against that side of the machine. So it holds it into that cutter head. Uh, because you have to remember every time you're cutting something that cutter head is trying to push the material away from it So that counteracts that force The next head the third head 
is your movable spindle. So that one's fixed. That spindle doesn't move. These fences can move, but the spindle stays fixed. This one, I have a crank here on the side of the machine with an indicator dial. And I can crank this and it moves very slowly because it's very precise. But you can see that that head moves in and out. And I actually have this one taken off for you here. Everything on this machine is actually still covered in grease. They, they put a anti-corrosion coating on it for shipping. So this head comes off like this. You can maybe see here, these knives are bolted in. So you unbolt those knives, change your knives out for a different profile. On the bottom, it uses a spacer system. So I'll set that there for right now. To change the height of your spindles, I have lots of different spacers in all different thicknesses and you use them to raise and lower that cutter head to get it to the size you want for whatever you're making. The top head here, that's, think of, you know, your standard wood planer. That's basically a big planer head. This particular machine can plane up to 20 inches wide, so that's a pretty wide head there. And once again, you've got planer knives and then you've got room for your molding knives. You know, if you were running crown molding, you'd put a, a big cutter here to cut that intricate detail of the crown. So there's a lot of different options there. And dust collection throughout the whole machine. Every head has dust collection port on it. That goes, and there's the one for the top head. That comes down, that's part of the lid. That goes up into our central dust collection system here. You can see all four heads have their own separate hose. And the last feed roll here is a polyurethane covered feed roll. That's so when the machine passes through this last head, this last head is, cleans everything up and then you won't mar the finish. If you ran these aggressive steel heads on this side of the cutter head, everything coming out of the machine would have dense feed marks in it. So you have to run a polyurethane feeder coming out. And then obviously it just discharges here. Got this plastic on this one, which is really nice. That helps keep the chips in because this thing makes a ton of sawdust. All our sawdust shoots out to an open shed and I sell my, my shavings for, for horse bedding. So we make a lot of it. And the one other thing, the feed, feed motors here on the side. This is adjustable feed, so by turning this knob, I can go run faster or slower. I'm really excited for this molder. This is a little bit bigger than what I've been running in the past. It's got more horsepower. It's the same setup, basically. Everything is basically set up the same way, more or less, with a few tweaks here and there. And I think it's gonna be a really nice addition to my shop here. There is quite a learning curve to these machines, I'll be honest with you. If you're familiar with woodworking equipment, if you know what it's like to set a joinder and a planer to the right thickness, and if you're familiar with the shaper or router table, it's like doing all of those at the same time. You know, you have to make sure your bottom head's adjusted right. This head has to be adjusted that your fences are taking off the right amount of material. This cutter has to be in and out to the right width your side pressure rollers have to be putting enough pressure on not too much pressure same way with your feed rolls you want enough pressure but not too much pressure and then your top head you know and then all your molding knives have to be you know dialed to the right position so there is definitely a learning curve to this there's a lot of things going on at once you may have noticed the clear window there. That helps you get a visual as you're sending test pieces through and kind of pick up on, on what may be going wrong because everything you set up, you're pretty much gonna have to run a test piece to make sure you have it right. I've been doing this long enough now. I pretty much, I'm not perfect by any means, but I, I can get these turned around pretty quick and set up pretty flawlessly. I still always test myself. Still always do a little tweaking and fine tuning. But when you're first starting out, they can cause a lot of frustration. So this is actually a, a planer molder. Purists out there might say this isn't a true molder, 
The difference between a planar molder and a true molder, or I'm gonna use the term true molder, I don't know if that's, you know, a traditional molder, I guess we'd say. This has the ability, this has a wide cutting head top and bottom. So this can be used just as a planer. Traditional molders are more purpose built. They have some features that really let you dial in the accuracy, but a lot of times they're, you know, six inch, nine inch wide. They don't have the range that this machine has. But on the flip side, they're more production oriented and they can run material much quicker than this machine. So it's a trade off. For me, this machine is the perfect mix for my operation. It, it really does a nice job. I'm really looking forward to running this. It's not that much of a departure from the machine I had, so I'm expecting it to, to work pretty much the same way. You can see that looks very similar inside. It's just a little bit dirtier, a little bit more used. So this one's gonna be for sale. That's going out of here. And I'm actually gonna do a video, before I take that out of here, I'm gonna do a video comparing and contrasting the two because if you're watching this, if you found this video because you're interested in these machines, I don't think anybody's made a video that really explains the nuts and bolts differences in a visual format. So I can go side by side from one machine to the next and I'll be able to show you the pros and cons of each and maybe help you out there. So that's gonna be kind of a niche video for some of you guys, but I figured I'd make it because, you know, I might be able to help somebody out. So that's about all I have on this. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys learned something here and you'll be seeing plenty of this machine running here in the upcoming weeks. So have a good day. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this, if you wanna see more content like this, make sure you subscribe and I'll catch you guys later.